Okay, hear me out. What if humans were the size of elephants? Or even bigger? Would our skulls and our faces look the same as they do now? The science says that this is unlikely. In this first episode of Scullywag Speculative, I'm going to be looking at giant skulls. I'm going to be breaking down how the skulls of animals change with increasing size, and using these patterns we see in biology, I'm going to give you an idea of just how weird the skulls of real human giants would actually look. Dr. Rex here, welcome to the Scullywag Lab where I present the bare bones fundamentals of skull science. Giants can be seen all through mythology, religious texts, fantasy and folklore. Some believe giants once existed, and there's no shortage of pictures online claiming to show the dug up remains of some gigantic human-like skeleton from a time lost to the ages. But if giants really existed, the patterns we see in the animals all around us today suggest that their skulls would look very different. Let me explain. The skulls of most animals change with size in often predictable ways. Patterns of shape change that happen with changes in size are known as allometry. There's a few obvious examples of allometry that would fundamentally change the appearance of any giant species of human. The most obvious of these is brain size. There's a tendency for brains to be relatively smaller in larger animals. This pattern is known as Hawler's Rule. This is a nice image from a classic Leonard Radinsky paper showing the different brain sizes of small dogs and cats and large dogs and cats. Now the brains of the larger dog and cat are definitely bigger than the brains of the smaller ones, but they're smaller in proportion to the rest of the skull. This means that among closely related species, larger skulls have relatively smaller brain cases. The obvious exception to this is humans, but our increase in brain size has come with obvious improvements to problem solving and communication. For other animals, we know that the larger species aren't necessarily dumber or anything, even though they have relatively smaller brains. So why could this be happening? Well, the brain is one of the most complex things around and there's no crystal clear answer to explain the patterns we see. But regardless of the reasons, Hawler's rule means that if enormous human-like giants existed, they'd probably have much smaller brains. In fact, for a giant to have a brain proportionally similar to ours, they'd have to be thinking, communicating, and generally doing things in ways that are far more complex than what we're capable of. This is based on an idea called the principle of proper mass, which essentially suggests that the relative size of the brain might be related to the complexity of behaviors. Now for the next pattern, let's take a look at the skull of a real giant among us, the elephant. Some consider elephant skulls to be the inspiration behind the cyclops, because this huge hole in the middle here looks like the socket of one enormous eye. But in truth, this is the elephant's nasal passage. The eyes are actually positioned to either side in these small little sections here. Now look at how small the eyes are in a living elephant. That's right, bigger animals have relatively smaller eyes. This plot shows that even the biggest animals on Earth, like whales and elephants, don't need eyes any bigger than around 5 centimeters or a couple of inches wide. So you can imagine an enormous giant would have much smaller looking eyes. Let's take a look at these patterns in some skulls. This is a cool animation I made of the skull of a small rock wallaby warping into the skull of a large rock wallaby. The smaller species has a larger brain and eye sockets, and you can see these shrink with increasing size. I'll be discussing what this elongation of the face in bigger species means in a later video. But for now, let's take a look at foxes and wolves. To the left we have a small fox, and to the right we have a large wolf. Now, we can see at their original sizes, the brain case of the wolf is a bit bigger than the brain case of the fox. But when we scale the skulls to the same size, the brain case of the wolf is smaller. Notice how the orbits that house the eyes are also smaller in the wolf. Now, if you remember from my previous videos, the temporalis muscle is connected to the brain case. But a smaller brain case means there's less area for the temporalis to attach to. So another interesting feature of larger animals is that they sometimes have what's called a sagittal crest along the midline of the brain case. This gives a larger attachment area for the muscles. So taking all this information together, if giants really existed, their skulls would probably have relatively smaller brain cases and relatively smaller eye sockets. Now, based on these patterns, a small species of human would have skulls kind of like this. Just a reminder not to confuse this with hominids like Australopithecus. We're assuming a human-like species here with an equivalent degree of brain function to ourselves. Under these conditions, a larger species would look more like this. 
And these differences would get even more obvious the bigger the giant is. You know what? There might even be a sagittal crest there too. So with this in mind, let's take a look at some of the skeletons of giants posted up on the interwebs. Hmm... Highly suspect. Giants like these would have needed to eat an enormous amount of food to maintain brains that big. I guess that'd explain why they like eating people so much. Beef fi fo fum as they say. And what about their depictions in general? I think the closest might be one one from Game of Thrones. It looks like they made some effort to make him look like he had smaller eyes. They certainly gave him stumpier feet, which is definitely expected in larger species. That's some really nice work there. So if you're wondering what you might look like as a giant, well I took these patterns I've just described to you and uh, took a stab at turning myself into one. Here's me at normal size, and here's me at around five meters tall. Look at that handsome fella. Anyway, I can totally understand why artists and creature designers don't tend to go down this path. Usually characters that are given these features tend to be portrayed as a little bit more stupid. <laughs> Dumb skulls. But the thing is they actually wouldn't be. Their brains would have just been subjected to the same kind of negative allometry as other groups of closely related species around today. So maybe what we need to do is normalize smart giants with small brains. If you've appreciated this first ever episode of Scullywag Speculative, leave a like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.